morning so I've got a an update on the Sitecore data importer uh, the there are three changes to this uh, project one is that uh, I now have support for CSV files so if you're you need to import data from your Excel or you've exported some database to a CSV list you can import that now uh, the import is at its core, um, pulling the file name from the query field, uh, breaking that up into lines of strings, and then getting each field value. Um, so the field it's expecting the field name to be a numeric value, a, a column position numeric value, and with that it, it can get the individual uh, fields. So here in Sitecore, what you're, you're going to look at, so this import query field is going to be the path to the file that you're importing. Uh, you're telling it, obviously, all the same stuff here as any of the other imports. The only other um, caveat is that you've got, you know, a numeric value from the from field, and that's what it's going to use to, to get the column. You know, you can still identify the, the to field as whatever you'd like. Another, actually, another important caveat is that the file itself should live under the web application, otherwise you're going to run into permissions issues. So it'll run the import, it won't throw any error, but it won't actually find the file either. So that's not a useful thing. You want to make sure that you have permissions to the, the file that you're trying to import, and the, that means it's basically to live under the application that's running, which in this case is the web application. So uh, with that, that's the first upgrade. The second upgrade is that the application itself has been moved. So I no longer have it here under, as it's uh, a pop-up application. I thought that was um, unnecessary. So I moved it back to the import item. This data imported tab is actually where it is now. It kind of made more intuitive sense to me to have it here. It's the same layout. Uh, I basically stripped off the one of the fields that refreshes the list of connection strings but now you can select the import you want it's kind of more in, intuitive in that sense that you're clicking on the one that you want to import and then you're running it from there uh, so hopefully that will be uh, something everybody appreciates with that that's the second um, update the third is from a user request who needed to run the imports on a schedule so to do that, I, <clears throat> I added an, a console application. Uh, so you'll see it here as a separate project, this console application. Uh, this program takes in a handful of parameters from the string args, uh, it, such as assembly and class name, so it can create the class and then pass in the database uh, connection string and the ID string of the import item that you want to run. Um, and then it, you know, creates the map and runs a process function. So with that, um, you'll see also when you install the package under the Sitecore modules data import folder, you'll see a scripts folder. And then there's a sample batch uh, file call that does that runs this. And you can you know create your own uh, and run them from scheduled tasks or you can you might be able to run the uh, executable straight from the scheduled task to pass in the parameters in the uh, the context location. Um, so here is, it, this is really just to kind of give you an idea of how you would go about it in case you really have, you know, no experience. This, this should get you off the ground quicker. So you, it's telling you here what the parameters are. This is giving you um, a variable to the, the Elantra executable and this is calling it with all the parameters. So you have a, an example of how this should run. Um, so that is the third and final uh, update. So there's the CSV import, there's the, uh, the application itself has moved, and the console application. All right, well, uh, hopefully that will be a, a good number of improvements that uh, everybody will appreciate.